<laughs> there we go. How the hell you doing, everybody? My name is Brain Smasher. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is to your liking. This video is about an album that has been seriously to my liking. It's probably going to be my album of the year. We're talking about Horizonless by Memphis, Tennessee's Loss. Uh, just picked this up a couple of weeks ago, and I probably listened to it six or seven times in a row. It was just in my car over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and it never gets old, and I've just I just can't stop going back to it and just dwelling inside of its uh, vast expanse and uh, environment uh, as I listen to it. So I just uh, got some thoughts about it I wanted to share with you. It's been a while since I did a music review. It felt like I was just kind of like, I don't know, out of the rhythm of it or whatever. Um, new job hasn't really allowed me a lot of like headspace to kind of think up things, but I've got some uh, opinions on the album. I think it's fucking great. So, um, one of the more remarkable things about it, um, I think, is that is I've noticed that the drumming, um, it's not overly complicated. It spares no expenses at uh, accompanying the amazing riffs. It's just exactly what the music calls for. Um, and I've I'm a drummer. I've played. Uh, really really slow music and it's really really difficult to play music this slow and the guy is just awesome so well done on the drumming uh, that's one of the things I think that just kind of sets the tone for everything to lay upon and it's just so perfectly done the album as a whole it really plays really well and interestingly um, I don't know if I've ever heard really I guess Asheron's Rites of the Black Mass kind of takes on this uh, format, but between every metal song, there's an interlude on both the Asheron album and this Lost album. Um, but on the Lost album, the interludes or the sort of in-between non-metal songs are very different from one another, and they're also very different from the Funeral Doom metal that's found on the other songs. Um, there's some, um, I don't know, there's just really all kinds of stuff. Like right now, you'll hear it, there's like some Hammond organ going on, sort of like some vampiric sort of, um, washy sort of ambient music going on. And it really night it really sets the tone and kind of lets you have some breathing room, uh, between each one of these songs. And it really, I think it also kind of gears you up and makes you eager to go back to hearing the metal again once that interlude is over with so it really works really well i think it was really a brilliant uh way to lay out the album without uh you know just pushing everything forward and having everything be just this heavy murkiness with no breathing room in between it so that was the interlude uh and the next song is going to come in and you'll hear the the metal um lost if you're not familiar their style is pretty unique and i think really they've been developing better and better their personality musically um, and I think what sets them apart really from any other funeral doom band um, or any doom band for that matter is that their guitars are just awash with like sour notes and just these clangy sort of um, clashing structures or chords I guess I would say I'm not a, I'm not a uh, guitar player by any means so I don't really know exactly know quite how to put it but there's like sweet harmonies and then there's these sour notes so it kind of like has this play with you where it draws you in with these alluring sweet sort of melodies but then just like hammers away these clashy sour notes that just really fit the atmosphere of being like a morose downtrodden sort of um, depressive mood I kind of like to think uh, the main songwriter, Mike Meacham, um, I've met him a couple of times. He's a nice dude. I've kind of known about him through the scene for a couple of years. And he's, um, as far as as far as I know, he's been a cab driver for a really long time. Um, and when I listen to this album and even the last album, Despond, you'll see it up there, um, I kind of find myself like, like kind of seeing the album through Mike's eyes or through his mind and I picture him almost like a Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver 
just going around town, just kind of lost in your thoughts, but there with the public and people, um, but just having like this ever growing brooding hatred for everyone that you're in a car with while maintaining, you know, a friendly sort of rapport with everyone. I'm sure it isn't affecting his job or anything like that, but I have this like, uh, you know, in the soundtrack of Taxi Driver, I think it's by, um, is it Claudio Simonetti or Basil Polidorius? Actually, I was wrong. It was Bernard Herman who did the soundtrack of Taxi Driver. Anyways, that soundtrack is just so evocative of the mood of that movie, and I think there's some strange kind of parallel between that and this album. Anyways, that's just kind of a, a something I've enjoyed about listening to Loss. And actually, at first, I didn't really get into Loss. Um, I picked up uh, the copy of their demo, a CDR copy of their demo, on the floor in a club in Chicago one night, and it never really did much for me. And I even saw them live at Gilead Fest 1, uh, maybe 2013 or something like that, maybe 12. Didn't really get it. It didn't click with me. Uh, and then the second time I was seeing Loss live, I... I stood there on the PA just staring at them and just just in curiosity and just like almost waiting for it to wash over me and I swear it just at one point it finally hit me like those sour chords and notes were just hammering away at me until it really clicked with me emotionally um, and that's something that and that's never gone away and I've just I keep coming back to looking for that connection with their music and I think one of the things Lost is more successful with than really any other funeral doom band or just any band regardless of genre is how there is such a believable emotional connection with their music. There's a lot of lyrics are just absolutely beautiful, but there's and like getting to know the band and see how they operate and learning kind of what they're like. It seems like there's like this tongue in cheek sort of way of approaching this depression and suicidal sort of emotions and homicidal even emotions there's a song on here called uh moved beyond murder um but there's a like almost a poetic sort of tongue-in-cheek way that they go about this sort of morose topics that I, I i find makes it a little bit more believable a lot more believable than most bands um and it makes it seem just so real the way they just push those topics over the top um so yeah that's like all i've really uh got to say about the album it's fucking phenomenal there's just so much to get out of this record uh it was brilliantly produced by billy anderson who has worked with fucking everybody from neurosis mr bungle melvin's you name it agalock every band from the u.s pretty much has worked with billy anderson so it's brilliantly produced I can't recommend picking this up enough. Uh, Losses Horizon List. Do yourself a favor and get a copy of this. It's so fucking good. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments what kind of album or if you have any particular albums that you would like to see me review. And maybe I'll consider it. Until next time, see you later.